Greek two trigonometric functions of acute angles. At the end of this module, you're expected to be familiar with the unit circle and know the trigonometric function values of the angles 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. Well, to define the six trigonometric functions of an acute angle, we will consider an angle in relation to its intersection of the circle drawn on the Cartesian plane such that it centers at the origin. In this figure, the terminal side of the angle intersects the circle at the point P, X, Y. This is the point we're talking about. This is the point we're talking about. The six trigonometric function values can be defined as follows. Cosine of this angle here is equal to x over r. That's the x coordinate of the intersection of the ray of this terminal side and this radius. Sine theta is y over r. That's the ratio of the y coordinate of this point, this point P, in this radius here of the circle we're talking about. The tangent is simply the ratio of the y coordinate to the x coordinate. The secant, the cosecant, and the cotangent are the reciprocals of cosine, sine, and tangent, respectively. That's why if you notice here, secant is r over x, which is the reciprocal of x over r. Also, y over x is the tangent, whereas the cotangent is the reciprocal of that, or the x over y. So, for example, if you want to determine the six trigonometric function values of the angle here, theta, whose terminal side, the green ray, intersects the circle with center at the origin at the point 3, 4. So the, at this point, this ray intersects this circle with radius r. So how do we determine its function values? Well, first, we, ter we ter determine the value of r by using the formula x squared plus y squared equals r squared and replacing x and y with the values from 3, 4. The reason why we were able to do that is because if we connect this down to this, it's like having a, a right triangle here, which of course will follow the Pythagorean theorem. So this this leg here has a length of 3 and this leg here has a length of 4. So that's where we got that equation there. T squared plus 4 squared plus R squared. 25 out cos R squared or R equals 5. Therefore, the radius of the circle is 5. Once the value of R is known, we can now substitute the values of X and Y, R in the definitions. These are the definitions we have given a while ago. And since we already know the values of x, y, and r, then we just substitute it here. So we got these numbers here. Okay, so these are the trigonometric values of that particular point. Well, the definitions we have stated before would be much simpler if we designate the circle to have a radius of 1. And this kind of circle is what we call the unit circle. It is a circle that has a center at the origin, the radius of one unit. That's the reason why it's called the unit circle, because of the fact that its radius is one unit. Now, since our r is equal to 1, we now have these new definitions for our six trigonometric functions or six trigonometric ratios. Take note, these, these six equations or these six definitions 
can only be used if the circle we're talking about is the unit circle. Now, there are what we call special angles because they are angles of um, well, special right triangles the 30, 60, 90 and the 45, 45, 90 and well, we have learned how to determine the trigonometric function values for an angle in certain position if we know the coordinates of the point of the section of its terminal side with a circle that is centered at the origin that's what we have been talking about in the in the previous slides now let's look at trigonometric function values of the special angles that I was talking about well the special angles are the 30 degree angle which is pi over 6 in radians the 45 degree angle which is pi over 4 in radians and of course the 60 degree angle which is pi over 2 in radians well when we studied I don't know if you remember but when we studied the special right triangles in geometry these are the same angles that we talked about so maybe it's, it's better if we have a quick review of the special triangles here. But as you know, in a 30-60-90 triangle, there's a special relationship between the hypotenuse and the two legs. Given that the hypotenuse is H, the leg that's opposite the 30 degree angle is always half the hypotenuse. Whereas the leg that's opposite the 60 degree angle is half the hypotenuse times square root of 3. This means that the longer leg, the one opposite 60, is longer by a factor of square root of 3. For a 45-45-90 triangle, which is also called an isosceles right triangle because of the, because of the, the fact that these two angles are congruent, making the legs of the triangle the same. So if this is x, this is x. That's the definition of an isosceles triangle. So it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And the hypotenuse is, of course, longer by a factor of square root of 2. So if we know the value of the, the measure of the legs, all we have to do is to multiply that by square root of 2, and we will get the measure of the hypotenuse. Well, since we know the, the relationships that I have just discussed, then we can simply get the trigonometric function values of these angles, the 30, 60, and the 45 degree angle. Now, so of course we will be using a unit circle to simplify matters, and let's say we have a 30 degree angle here, one of our special angles. So let's try to get the trigonometric function values of this angle. Well, the measure of the angle is 30 degrees. As we know, we can drop a, um, this one, we can drop a perpendicular. So if this is a perpendicular segment coming from P projected to the x-axis. Then we have here a right triangle. So if this is a 30 degree angle, this is a 90 degree angle. Therefore, this is 60 degrees. And so we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. A special case. Well, since we know that in a 30-60-90 triangle, the leg opposite the 30 degrees is one half, and the leg opposite the 60 degree angle is this one, square root of 3 over 2. And so, we already know that the coordinates of P are square root of 3 over 2 and one half. Therefore, we can get the six trigonometric function values of a 30 degree angle using the definitions that were given available. Now, how about a 60 degree angle? Well, as you can see here, there's a 60 degree angle intersecting the unit circle at this particular point, and we are now concerned about the trigonometric function values of the angle 60. Well, using the same idea, if we drop a perpendicular from P to the x-axis, of course that's right angle, and we know that this will be 30 degrees, and in a 30-60-90 triangle, again the hypotenuse is 1, 
So this is half the hypotenuse, while this other one here is half the hypotenuse times square root of g. And so it's easy for us to get the coordinates of p because the radius is 1. So now we can get the trigonometric function values by simply plugging, plugging in the values that we got available. Now, how about a 45-45 degree angle? So what you, what you see here is a 45 degree angle and the unit circle. So if you want to get the trigonometric function values of this angle, you have the following considerations. Well, again, using the idea of projecting this point to the x-axis, we will be able to form our special or triangle, 45-45-90. So if this is 45, this other angle here should also be 45 degrees and since the radius is 1 it happens to be the hypotenuse as well of this right triangle therefore we divide by square root of 2 or square root of 2 over 2 now since we know the coordinates of the terminal point of of this um, angle then we can get its trigonometric function values. Again, it's just a matter of substituting the values that we got in the formulas we have for these trigonometric function values. Now, we summarize the, the values we obtained they were below. It might help if you try to memorize them. Now, let's talk about the fundamental angles, which as we know, angles that uh, whose terminal sides lie on the axis, either the x or the y axis. So we can simply memorize this table here, or try to visualize the unit circle. As you can see here, for a zero degree angle, the sine and cosine are zero and one. Okay. Very simple. The reason. So, we simply memorize these values here. 